Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the July 20th, 2022 public hearing of the Calvert County Planning Commission. I will now call this meeting to order and take roll call. Vice Chair Kernan? Here. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Freeland? Here. Commissioner Tuohy? Here. Commissioner Dr. Holler? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. All right, we have a quorum. For the next item, we are actually missing um, an item for action on the proposed agenda. Staff is recommending we replace the Pledge of Allegiance with action on the agenda and um, rep recite the pledge at our regular meeting following this hearing. If I could have a motion. So, so moved. Second. All right, I have a motion by Commissioner Tui, a second by Commissioner Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. And now I'll entertain a motion on the proposed agenda as modified. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the agenda as modified. Right. I'll second that. I have a motion by Commissioner Tui, a second by Commissioner Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The next item is number three, public hearing tier three, Wyatt's Ridge, SD 138200, lots one through 24, preliminary plan pursuant to the 2012 Laws of Maryland. Chapter 149 of the Sustainable Growth and Agricultural Preservation Act of 2012. I will now turn the floor over to Tamara Blake Wallace, Planning Commission Administrator, to introduce staff and go over the rules of etiquette for the public hearing. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tamara Blake Wallace, Planning Commission Secretary, and with me tonight for the public hearing is Olivia Vidato, Planner 3. Tonight, the purpose of this public hearing is to consider and receive comments on the submitted preliminary plan for SD 138200, Wyatt's Ridge, a major subdivision within the Tier 3 areas of the Adopted Growth Tier Map. This hearing is held per the Planning Commission Adopted Guidelines for conduct, conduct at public hearings and meetings. This hearing has been properly advertised as required by law. Since this public hearing is being held virtually and in person, the public can attend by viewing the live stream on the county's website. However, if you wish to speak, you must either sign in on the sheet located on the podium at the door, use the raise hand function if attending via <coughs> Zoom, or call in at 888-475-4499 and enter the meeting code 858-5579 4151. If asked for a passcode, it is the pound sign. And then listen to the board's meeting until called upon to speak. When the floor is open for public comment for this hearing, those in attendance will be called in the order they signed up. Those calling in will need to press star nine. Speakers will be identified by the last four digits of their phone number and unmuted when called on. Speakers will be asked to state their name and address. Speakers who are providing comments as individuals will be allocated two minutes. Comments being made by designated representatives of a group will be allocated five minutes. At this time, I will turn it over to Olivia Vidato for her presentation. Good evening, everyone. So this public hearing is for Wyatt's Ridge, lots one through 24. This is the public hearing that is required by law for any subdivision that is within the tier three of the growth map that was adopted. Uh, this is only for that purpose, not the actual subdivision. The subdivision would come before you if this is approved tonight at a later date, hopefully next month in August. So <clears throat> with that, I would also just like to say, I'll be talking a bit more than I usually do tonight because the nature of what this is, the majority of it needs to be read into the public record. So pursuant to the 2012 Laws of Maryland Chapter 149, the Sustainable Growth and Agricultural Preservation Act of 2012, criteria was implemented that all proposed residential major subdivisions within the Tier 3 areas of the Adopted Growth Tiers map may only be approved after at least one public hearing is held by the Planning Commission to review specific criteria set forth by that law. That requirements or that criteria and requirements are as follows. The cost of providing local governmental service to the residential major subdivision unless a local jurisdi jurisdiction's adequate public facilities law already requires a review of governmental services. So in our case, pursuant to Article 7 of the Calvert County Zoning Ordinance, adequate public facilities for schools and roads must be available prior to final plat approval. 
The second item is the potential environmental issues or a natural resources inventory related to the proposed residential major subdivision must be provided. Pursuant to Article 8 of the Calvert County Zoning Ordinance, the environmental features, which include but are not limited to wetlands, steep slopes, erodible soils, and forest conservation requirements, are shown on the preliminary plan along with required setbacks or buffers, along with any supporting reports and documents for review to provide adequate protection of the sensitive areas. Third item is, in addition to plan and commission review and recommendation for approval of all major subdivisions within Tier 3 areas, documentation must be submitted to the local environmental health director indicating that the proposed residential major subdivision is within an adopted Tier 3 area. The preliminary plan and the final plat are both submitted for review and approval and signature from the Maryland State Health Department Environmental Health Division prior to preliminary approval by the Planning Commission. A copy of the approved tier map was provided to the Environmental Health Division in May 2017 to use when they review and confirm the designation of the adopted growth tier map for each subdivision. And that was deemed acceptable by the Maryland Department of Planning to meet this requirement. I apologize, I'm used to them moving the screen for me. So this shows you the location of the project is um, off Skinner's Turn Road. This is the list of the adjacent property owners that were notified. There's a public notification sheet that goes out to them by the developer. This was submitted to our office along with the certificates that they were mailed certified. That is the public hearing notification that went out to all of the adjacent property owners. And that was the legal notice that was posted properly for two weeks prior to the Planning Commission meeting. This is a copy of the preliminary plan <coughs> that, <coughs> excuse me, again, this plan would come before you after the approval of the Tier 3. This shows the lot layouts in red. Uh, the open space is surrounding it and including the majority of the environmental features and forest, which you can see in green few large lots in the back, um, I believe, yes, sorry. So for the fiscal impact, there would be no fiscal impact to Calvert County as the developer will be responsible for the construction of the lots, the roads, and other county, state, and federal requirements, which will be reviewed and approved with the preliminary plan and the final plats. The preliminary plan and the final plats also require approval by the Planning Commission. Adequate public facilities for schools and roads must be met prior to final plat approval. Fees associated with residential permits with the excise tax are in place to partially offset services for schools, recreation, roads, and solid waste. So the conclusion or recommendation, the applicant has met the requirements pursuant to the 2012 Laws of Maryland, Chapter 149, the Sustainable Growth and Agricultural Preservation Act of 2012, and the criteria set forth by that law. So the Planning Commission may consider the request and approve, may consider the request and approve with modifications, may defer and request additional information for approval, or the Planning Commission may deny the request. I will be happy to answer any questions that I can. I do believe we have some representatives here um, for the plan that can answer for you as well. Thank you, Olivia. Um, for item four, do we have any testimony from agencies, state or local agencies? Okay. Um, does the Planning Commission have any questions for staff? Madam Chairman? Yes. Olivia, are there any agricultural preservation districts uh, adjoining property? Uh, I believe possibly the one to the east. Um, if there are, those would also have some protection based on what our requirements are as far as um, if there's any fencing that would be required, if there is an agricultural, not just an ag preservation, but if it's assessed as ag, that's a requirement as well. So that would be part of the preliminary approval. And in your, um, in your memo, uh, number two, uh, talks about having any supporting reports or documents uh, for review uh, regarding the environmental protection. Are, mm -hmm. are there any of those available? Um, those are available with the preliminary plan itself. They come in for review by different agencies based on what they are, and they would be, um, the comments from those review agencies would reflect the review of those reports and documents. 
and certainly can be made available, there are available to the public or to the planning commission. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, did the applicant wanna come up and say anything? All right, next up would be public testimony. Before we begin, we'll first go over the rules from the moderator. The floor has been open for public comment on this hearing and is a um, resolution 6-89 was adopted and is available here today to maintain the order and decorum of the governmental process. Those attending in person will be invited to speak first. For those joining virtually, if you wish to speak, press pound um, star nine or use the raise hand function. Virtual participants will be identified by the screen name or last four digits of their phone number and unmute it one at a time. Speakers will be asked to state their name and address. Speakers who are providing comment as individuals will be allocated two minutes. Speakers who are designated representatives of a group will be allocated five minutes. When unmuting, um, the caller last four digits of the phone number, we, um, are, we are ready now to receive comments um, at this time. Okay, Did, Olivia, have we received any written testimony? Have not. No written. Okay, we'll now take testimony from in-person speakers. The first speaker that has signed up is Trey Williams. I won't put my name in the sheet. I'll put my phone number. Okay. Um, the next speaker, is it Dale Bright? Bingham. Bingham. If you can come up to the mic. <coughs> State your name and address for the record. Bingham, 7426 Bingham Ridge Lane, Owens, Maryland, 37361. I want to be a Jason Todd Felix. The only question really that a lot of us had deals with um, how the lots are laid out in the homes and other stuff. Is that in a different meeting? That's not this one? That's what it That's sounded correct. like. That's, That's it. correct. Yes. Okay. That's so correct. Will we get notified of that as well? So you will not get a notification in the mail like you did on this one because this is a public hearing okay. um, specifically. It will be at the next meeting in August if this is approved tonight. Um, you can certainly call and check. Uh, my name's Olivia Bedato. I'm in Planning and Zoning. Okay. Uh, the agenda will be posted uh, the Friday before the meeting. And if you have any questions on it, please feel free to call me beforehand as well. But it should be in August if this gets approved tonight. Okay. Is that open to the public or is yes. that not? Okay. No, it's perfectly open to the public. You can come here or attend via Zoom. Okay. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Next on the list is Sarah Vance. Hi, good evening, I'm Sarah Vance, and my husband and I live at 7414 Danbridge Lane. And like my neighbors, I have just general concerns, uh, property value being a major one, light and sound effects to our small neighborhood, runoff during construction. I think a lot of these can be saved for next time, but I'll just go through them quickly. Significantly, the traffic impact at Skinner's Turn Road, including into and out of my neighborhood and theirs, and certainly Route 2 and Route 4. Uh, that's a very big concern. It's already a busy neighborhood. Uh, I'm sorry, busy road with the industrial park and shopping center at the end. So that's mostly what I wanted to say, and I'll come back next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the list is James Piper. My name is James Piper. I'm at uh, 820 Shade Tree Court, Owings. We're adjacent to this property. I really don't have questions yet, but except concerning the process, we have until now absolutely no information on what's going on, who's doing what, what's being put there. We didn't even have an idea of the number of lots. When we got received the notice, I called into the county, the number given, and asked if we could get any of that information, if there was a plot plan like what you're showing now, and we're told no, just to come to the meeting. Well, based on that, how can we ask any meaningful question as to what's going to happen? Uh, so I would suggest something needs to be done about the process here. It's one thing to notify us, but you gotta give us some information to deal with. I'm an engineer, I've dealt with facilities my whole career. If we approached one of our jobs this way, that with the information that has been given to people who are gonna be impacted by this, we would be run out of town. So I would ask this now, how can we get 
more concrete information, such as the plot plan, such as what they're going to do for road improvement. Where do we go to get this information? Is it available? So I do know that my name and number was listed at the bottom. I received no phone calls from anybody. I received one email from Sarah, I believe, um, looking for the agenda last week. I will be more than happy. I can scan plans. I can email them to you. Uh, I'd be happy to meet with you in person if you want to look at the file and try to answer any questions you have uh, before the meeting or give you the information for that night as well. Um, I'll be happy to give you my card and my information before we leave here tonight. That would be good. I, I did call the number down there and I was forwarded to somebody else and was told that information is not available. Well, I do apologize that you got that information because that's definitely not true. Okay. All right. I, if you can give me your card afterwards. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it for the in-person speakers. Is there anyone signed up to speak from Zoom? There are no hands raised. All right. Uh, moving on. Do we have any concluding comments from staff? I don't have any unless you have any other questions. Any other questions, commissioners? Um, item 13 is public comment, which has already taken place via the testimonies. So we can move forward to item 14, which is action. And at this time, I will ask for a motion to close the record and make a motion regarding the tier three SD-138200 Wyatt's Ridge Lots 1 through 24, preliminary plan pursuant to the 2012 Laws of Maryland, Chapter 149 of the Sustainable Growth and Agricultural Preservation Act of 2012. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the action on Tier 3, SD 138-200. Wyatt's Ridge, Lots 1 through 24, Preliminary Plan Pursuant to the 2012 Laws of Maryland, Chapter 149 of the Sustainable Growth and Agricultural Preservation Act of 2012 Requirements and close the record. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Vice Chair Kernan, seconded by Commissioner Jones. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next. Thank you, thank you Olivia. Next item is adjournment. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tui, a second by Commissioner Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you. Our um, public hearing is now adjourned, and our regular meeting will begin in about five, ten minutes.
Thank you, Becky. Tamara, when you're ready. Welcome, everyone. I am Tamara Blake Wallace, Planning Commission Administrative Secretary. This meeting will be conducted as a hybrid meeting, allowing for both virtual and in-person participation. Serving as moderator tonight is Jennifer David, filling in for our Planning Commission Development Review Coordinator, who will now go over the rules of etiquette for this meeting. Jennifer. Thank you, Tamara. Good evening. I am Jennifer David, Rural Planner for the Calvert County Planning and Zoning, and I will be moderating this evening. This meeting is being recorded both on video and audio for record keeping purposes. For those attending virtually or on a phone, please keep yourself muted to ensure no interruptions to the evening. If you are asked to speak and you are attending on your phone, you can mute and unmute yourself by using the phone's designated mute button or by pressing star six. If you are on a computer, you can mute and unmute yourself by clicking on the microphone slash mute button on the toolbar in the bottom left of your screen. You can also mute and unmute by using keyboard shortcuts. For Windows, press Alt-A. On a Mac, press Command-Shift-A. When questions or comments are requested of the public, those attending in person will be asked to speak first, and those attending virtually will speak after. If you are attending via phone and would like to ask a question or make comment, when asked, please use the raise hand function, star nine, and you will be called upon in turn to identify yourself for the record and speak. If you are attending virtually and would like to ask a question or make a comment, please go to the chat icon on your Zoom page and type your comment into that section. Finally, please say your name every time you speak for the benefit of those calling on you who cannot see you. Again, for mute or unmute, on a phone, star six, Windows, Alt A, on a Mac, Command Shift A. To raise a hand by phone, press star nine. For Windows, Alt Y and for a Mac, command shift Y. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. We'll now turn the floor back over to the chair. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Calvert County Planning Commission's July 20, 2022 regular meeting. My name is Maria Bueller, and as chair of the board, I will now call this meeting to order and take roll call. Vice Chair Kernan? Here. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Freeland? Here. Commissioner Tui? Here. Commissioner Dr. Holler? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Here. All right, if you can all please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Tamara. The next item is action on the proposed agenda. Commissioners, any changes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve this evening's agenda. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Kernan and a second by Commissioner Tui. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is action on the proposed summary of actions. We have one item, item 4A, the June 15th, 2022 regular meeting. Commissioners, any changes? Hearing none, do I have a motion? Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the summary of actions as proposed. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tui, seconded by Vice Chair Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Tamara? The next item on the agenda is recognition of persons attending the meeting. Tonight from the Department of Planning and Zoning, we have in attendance Mary Beth Cook, Director, Judy Makel, Deputy Director of Zoning, Carolyn Sunderland, Deputy Director of Planning, 
Jenny Plummer Walker, Long Range Planner, Rachel O'Shea, Zoning Planner, Christine Fenimore, Principal Planner, Olivia Vidado, Planner 3, and Kathleen Lockwood, Planner 1. Also in attendance with us tonight is our legal counsel, John Mattingly, and our recording clerk, Becky Parkinson. The next item on the agenda is item six, major subdivision for final review and action. It's item 6A. Tamara, before we begin, do I have anyone that would like to recuse themselves for this item? Yes, I would like to. I would like to recuse myself. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Williams. Item 6A is SDFP138224, Patuxent Commons. It's a final plat certification, and I will be presenting that tonight. Background and discussion. I, Tamara Blake Wallace, Secretary to the Planning Commission, certify that all the conditions of the preliminary approval granted via <coughs> Planning Commission action on October 21st, 2020, for SD 2020-0054, Patuxent Commons, lots 1 through 68, open space parcels A through D, and private rights of way, Sullivan Lane and Potomac Court have been met. The recommendations and the next step, the Planning Commission's options of course of action are approved as certified, recommend changes and approve accordingly, request additional information from staff, and defer to the Planning Commission meeting or disapprove. Thank you, Tamara. Commissioners, questions, comments? Hearing none, is there anyone from the public that would like to speak on this item? Anybody on Zoom? No, ma'am, there are no hands raised and there is nothing in the chat. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, in the matter of SDFP 138224, I'd like to make a motion that we approve as presented. And I will second it. I have a motion by Commissioner Tui, a second by Vice Chair Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Somebody could bring Lisa back in. Whenever you're ready. Okay, the next item on the agenda is item 6B, SDFP-142743, Rebecca's Field, final plat certification, and I will be presenting that tonight. Background and discussion. I, Tamara Blake Wallace, Secretary to the Planning Commission, certify that all conditions of the preliminary approval granted by Planning Commission on June 16, 2021, for SD138, 121, Rebecca's Field, Lots 1 through 14, Open Space, Residue and Rights of Ways, Patriot Lane, which is public, and Dustin Lane, which is private, have been met. The recommended next steps, 
Um, the Planning Commission's options of course of action are approve as certified, recommend changes and approve accordingly, <coughs> request additional information from staff and defer to a future Planning Commission meeting, or disapprove. Thank you. Commissioners, questions, discussion? Hearing none, is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this? Anybody online? No, ma'am, neither in the chat nor hands raised. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, in the matter of SVFP 142743, I would like to make a motion that we approve as presented. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tui, seconded by Vice Chair Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Tamara? Next item on the agenda is item 6C, SDFP 142810, Oakland Hall, Phase 5, for final plat certification, and I will also be presenting this tonight. I, Tamara Blake-Wallace, Secretary to the Planning Commission, certify that all conditions of the revised preliminary, preliminary approval granted on May 15, 2013 for SD 00-16A, Oakland Hall, Phase 5, 5B, Plat 31, Sheets 1 and 2, Lots 260 through 262, Open Space L and M, and Millstone Court, which is private, have been met. The seven-year APF hold date was met on October 15, 2010, based on the original preliminary approval date of October 15, 2003, with state and county tolling extensions, along with extensions granted by the Planning Commission. The preliminary approval is valid until May 4, 2023. The next steps are the Planning Commission's Options, of course, of action are approve as certified, recommend changes and approve accordingly, request additional information from staff and defer to a future planning commission meeting or disapprove. Thank you. Commissioners, questions, comments? Hearing none, is there anyone from the public or online? No, ma'am. I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, in the matter of SDFP 142810, I'd like to move that we approve as certified. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tui, seconded by Vice Chair Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Tamara? Okay. Next on the agenda. We have long range planning, Calvert County comprehensive plan and town center expansions. And presenting tonight will be Jenny Plummer Walker. Good evening, planning commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. Jenny Plummer Walker, long range planner. I am joined this evening virtually by Kat Lockwood, who is planner one with the long range planning team. The purpose of tonight's agenda item is to inform the planning commission of the board of county commissioners recent work sessions on the Calvert County Comprehensive Plan and Town Center expansions. The County Comprehensive Plan identifies nine town centers. Two of those town centers are the municipalities of North Beach and Chesapeake Beach, which have their own planning and zoning authority. The other seven town centers come under the County Commissioner's purview, Dunkirk, Owings, Huntingtown, Prince Frederick, St. Leonard, Lusby, and Solomons. The board held two work sessions on, the, on um, June 7th and June 28th, so last month, and they discussed whether to pursue directing staff to begin the process to amend the comprehensive plan, uh, which was adopted by the Board of County Commissioners in August 2019. In those work sessions, the Board of Commissioners decided to retain the future expansions of the town centers for Dunkirk, Owings, and St. Leonard, and they decided to pursue amending the, the expansions for Huntingtown, Prince Frederick, Lusby, and Solomons. So we'll go through each of those in turn. The town center expansions called for in the Calvert County Comprehensive Plan 
do not happen automatically. Um, there is a formal process that would be um, pursued in expanding the town centers uh, formally through the town center master plan and zoning updates and amendments to the Calvert County zoning, uh, zoning map. The first one, um, well, we'll start with the slides of the town centers that there's no proposed changes. Um, this is a close up on the left side of the Dunkirk town center that is um, from the county comprehensive plan that was adopted in 2019. And the map on the right is that shows the expansion of the Dunkirk Town Center as it was presented uh, at the Board of County Commissioners public hearing on July 23rd. So it's a little uh, closer in from the countywide map. The board decided not to pursue any changes to the future land use expansion of Dunkirk. So it would stay as it is adopted in the county comprehensive plan. The future expansion uh, is includes land to the northwest, which is Dunkirk District Park, and to the northeast, which is the state-owned property that includes the park and ride lot. Moving on to Owings, a close-up of the 2019 adopted comprehensive plan map is on the left, and then on the right is the map that was shown at the public hearing. As I mentioned, the board decided not to pursue making any changes to the comprehensive plan in regards to Owings. Uh, thus, it'll stay as it was adopted, which includes uh, the expansion on the, uh, across the road of Maryland 260. The next town center uh, is St. Leonard. The um, St. Leonard town center, excuse me, on the left is the close up from the map in the 2019 County Comprehensive Plan, and the map on the right is the map that was presented at the board's public hearing in 2019. The expansion of of St. Leonard includes that parcel, the, the, it's actually two parcels of land on the southeast. It includes land owned by the Board of Education that includes St. Leonard Elementary School. And also there's a parcel along Maryland 765 which is owned by the Board of County Commissioners. The board decided not to pursue changes to the future um, land use plan for St. Leonard so it would stay as it was adopted which is expanding it to that southeast. I will note that the St. Leonard Town Center Master Plan was updated in 2013, and that 2013 adopted plan calls for expanding it as shown here. Moving on to the town centers where the commissioners discussed changes. So there's four, um, four town centers. Let's look at Huntingtown first. This is a close up on the left of the 2019 comprehensive plan map. On the right, shows the uh, town center and the underlying zoning, so the current zoning. The green hatched area on the east side of Maryland 2-4 includes the Huntingtown High School parcel uh, and parcels from between there and the church that is on the southeast corner of Cox Road in Maryland 2-4. The um, commissioners uh, discussed moving forward with amendments to remove this expansion from the Huntingtown Town Center. Moving on to Prince Frederick, again, the Prince Frederick, the adopted plan, the adopted uh, map in the comprehensive plan is on the left, and on the right is also a plan from the comprehensive, sorry, a map from the comprehensive plan that shows Prince Frederick and the, pr and the phasing. Uh, the comprehensive plan talks about expanding Prince Frederick in two phases. The first phase would include um, land that is zoned employment center that is adjacent to Prince Frederick. And I'll, I'll get into more detail on the next map, which actually showed a little bit better. So the map on the right shows phase one and the current town center in the dark purple. And the light purple is the phase two expansion. So the commissioners talked about removing phase two. This map is in a little more detail and shows the underlying current zoning. So the uh, purple area is the current town center boundary and there's areas on the northeast which is zoned employment center. It includes the medical arts building adjacent to the hospital. So the hospital is located in town center, the um, medical arts building is not. So the, exp the, the, the phase one expansion would include the medical arts building. 
It also include the residential area in yellow on the southeast side of the town center. So that includes uh, the um, Symphony Woods and Calvert, Calvert Town. And then on the west side, there's employment center on the south uh, west side and a small narrow strip of residential between that and the current town center boundary and some area of um, employment center that's on immediately adjacent to the town center north of Maryland 231. The area that's shown in the green hatched on the west side that of the town center and there's a small portion on the southeast side that includes the area between 765 and Maryland 24. Those areas of uh, phase two um, the commissioners would like to see removed from the town center expansion. So in effect, there would no be not be a phase one and phase two expansion. There would just be one single expansion, which is currently phase one. Uh, I will note there's a tiny little um, piece of land that is not in the town center that is along um, Prince Frederick Boulevard south of Stokely Road. So that would be proposed to come into the town center, even though it was part of phase two. It was because it's... Um, because it's on the east side of, 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 of excuse me, Prince Frederick Boulevard, it makes sense to bring that small little corner into the town center. Moving on to Lusby and Solomons. This map shows um, the adopted plan, so a close up on the left, and then on the right, it shows the current zoning along with the one mile radius uh, for Lusby and the one mile perimeter for Solomons. The commissioners discussed retaining the proposed expansion for Lesby on the northeast, uh, sorry, north of the town center. So that includes Patuxent Business Park and the land that's zoned industrial that's along um, Cove Point Road. So that sh that's shown in that purple hatch color. The commissioners discussed removing uh, the town center, the potential ex town center expansion areas between Lesby and Solomons, there was never an intent to make those two town centers meet. It was just showing a, with that a future discussion of potentially including that area, portions of it as expansion. Commissioners would like to remove that. And then the comprehensive plan included expanding Solomons Town Center to include all of the Dow Peninsula. Currently there's a portion on the east side of the Dow Peninsula that is not in the town center with uh, the amendments that the commissioners would like to see that portion of Dow would remain outside the town center. Currently, um, there are two town center master plans under um, currently being updated, Prince Frederick and Dunkirk. Any amendments uh, in regards to Prince Frederick and the expansions would need to be reflected in the draft Prince Frederick master plan. And then, um, Currently, the Prince Frederick plan is in the second phase. Develop the plan. You've seen the first draft and have uh, advised staff on the changes you'd want to see. These amendments to the comprehensive plan would uh, necessitate changes to uh, the draft plan for Prince Frederick. And the third phase of the Prince Frederick master plan process would not be able to proceed. That's the adopt the plan. So we'd need to work on amending that draft plan before moving through the adoption phase. The work on the Dunkirk master plan is not affected by these um, proposed changes, so that one could proceed. Next steps, um, so staff is not asking for any action from the Planning Commission this evening. This is an informational um, update. We will return to the Planning Commission with proposed amendments for your consideration. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Madam Chair. Thank you. Yeah. Jen, so what I'm hearing you say is the commissioners want changes and we're going to get the, those proposed changes from the from the BOCC. Is that what I'm understanding? Staff will prepare the proposed changes that the commissioners have directed staff to do. Okay. Yep. The proposed work session, will that include the Board of County Commissioners? No, Planning Commission, you're, you, we will be bringing the amendments to you. Proposed. The proposed, yes, yes I, thank you, Mr. Mattingly. Yes. Will you be, re, can, yes. Yes. thank you. <laughs> Question, uh, 
at Huntington, the school is in a priority funding area. Uh, what happens in the future if, if we do this? And I, I, I know you, this is conjecture and I'm not asking you really, but this is a concern I have. Mm -hmm. if, if we adopt this and the commissioners adopt it and make it uh, uh, the new Huntington uh, boundaries, what happens if the school needs additional state money uh, for uh, improvements, expansion, or whatever? Or what wouldn't have to be expansion. It could be improvements to that. Uh, does this rule out, of you, since that's no longer going to be a priority funding area? Well, just for clarification, the Huntington High School is not currently in a priority funding area. It is adjacent to a priority funding area. So if we look at the map on the right, of the screen, so it's the dark purple area. That is the current boundary of the Huntingtown Town Center. So the high school is currently not in the town center, and thus it's not in the priority funding area for Huntingtown. It is possible uh, through um, a waiver process. The, the state has a waiver process for school construction and whether it be new construction or uh, expansion that local jurisdictions can go through that waiver process to get funding for schools that are outside priority funding areas. All right, and, and another, just an observation. Ever since the, the Pleasant Peninsula Plan, one of the axioms that's gone, occurred over and over, it's been repeated over and over again was that, if I'm understanding it right, was that in the town centers that had public water and sewer, that there would be a conscious effort, my word, conscious effort to direct as much growth as they could to the town centers as opposed to out into the countryside. Uh, if I'm understanding this, then the commissioners, at least for purposes of this, have pretty well decided to abandon that and we're, we're moving in a different direction now. That's a good question. I don't think that it's, the, the question was for the commissioners expanding the current town centers. So it's not abandoning the policy of directing growth to town centers. The question is, do the town centers uh, expand? Right. To, uh, to accommodate if, if, if you needed addition. Okay. Mr. Tui. No? Okay. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Yes, sir. Jenny, uh, regarding the, the, um, the Dow Peninsula, that area that is shown in green to be take, taken out? It's currently not in, currently not, currently in. not in under the future, the 2040 comprehensive plan, the portion that's not in the town center is to come into the town center. What the commissioners would like to see is that the, the map be amended so that that portion of Dow not even come into the town center. Okay. Happens, does that mean public water and sewer are not available for that area? Um, no, that does not mean that. And I'm not sure where the current water and sewer boundaries are or the service areas, whether it's classified one th through six. Service areas have either <coughs> are currently served by sewer or category six is no planned sewer service. I don't know about the Dow Peninsula on and that w side. One? Say again? For water, I, I do not know the current status for either water or sewer for that side of Dow. We certainly can find that out and bring that back to you. No, I'm just thinking it would mean a lot for water quality in the Solomon's Creek. Would that area be able to utilize the public sewer? Thank you. I'll, I'll find out on what the sewer category and water category is for that part of Solomon's and bring that back to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Anybody from the public that wishes to speak? Online? No, ma'am, there is nothing in the chat, nor is there any hands raised. Thank you very much. Tamara? Oh, we, uh, a hand just popped up. Okay. And um, next person, uh, oh, they've unmuted. Please announce right, yourself. Good, e 
Good evening. My name is Joseph Cormier. I'm at uh, 9201 Sam Owings Place, Owings, Maryland. Uh, going over this thing, uh, and I could be wrong, but I think when the commissioners had their meeting, they were concerned about having growth on both sides of four in Huntingtown, and so they decided not to include Huntingtown High School and the other properties owned by other people. And I'm concerned that by not including the, the high school in this plan that we're going to have to ha add an extra step by doing these waivers. And there's no good reason that I've heard not to include a high school if it's only to discourage business growth on that side of the road. If we're only including the property that's the high school, there'll be no room for business growth on that side of the road. And uh, to add on to that, uh, as we grow out and build out and build more roads and more uh, you know, housing construction, it, we need to take into account the aquifers and well access and septic and sewer access because we can't keep building and expect it to not go somewhere. We need to keep our waterways clean and pure and we need to be more cognizant of our sewer systems and our septic systems that are, a lot of them in, our, in my county are grandfathered in at this point and they're gonna start failing soon and we need to be more cognizant of where all our sewage is going. Thank you so much. Thank you. I see no more hands raised. Thank you. Tamara. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Next on the agenda, item eight, items for discussion slash action. Item 8A, text amendment, case number 2201, amendments to the Calvert County and Solomon's Town Center zoning ordinances to permit assisted living facilities within the D1 subdistrict. Presenting tonight will be Rachel O'Shea. Good evening, Planning Commission. Rachel O'Shea, Zoning Planner with Department of Planning and Zoning. Tonight I'll be presenting Text Amendment 22-01, Amendments to the Calvert County and Solomon's Town Center Zoning Ordinance to Permit Assisted Living Facilities within the D1 Subdistrict. Planning Zoning staff received a text amendment request from the Department of Economic Development. Economic Development staff is requesting a text amendment be pursued to permit assisted living within the D1 Subdistrict of the Solomon's Island Town Center. This text amendment would also correct an error within the county's online e-code in which assisted living facilities are listed as a permitted use within the D1 subdistrict. However, it is not within the adopted written Calvert County zoning ordinance. The proposed text amendment was presented to the Planning Commission on June 15th, 2022. The Planning Commission voted to direct staff to distribute the text amendment and receive agency comments. The purpose of this evening's meeting is to review and to discuss the proposed text amendment and review agency comments received and to request direction to move the proposed text amendment forward to joint public hearing. The map on your slide is of the Solomon's Out Island Town Center and um, of the, the subdistrict's map. The subdistrict of interest for this evening is in the center of Solomon's D1. This is a chart which is the key to the land use charts. The color coding at the bottom is to coincide with the main uh, land uses of that subdistrict, which corresponds to the next slide, which is the land use chart uh, by subdistrict. So for the text, the text amendment proposal, all we're doing here is adding a P for permitted to the D1 column for the use of assisted living facilities. Adopting this text amendment would be consistent with the description of the types of uses for the Solomon's Island Town Center Subdistrict D1. This is described as designated for primarily mixed use as in Subdistrict D3 to the south. To the north are subdistricts um, D2 and D3 also designated primarily for residential uses and subdistricts D4 and D5 are also um, described primarily for mixed use. So to review agency comments received, we planning and zoning received letters from the Department of Economic Development as well as the Economic Development Advisory Commission. Um, both agencies were in support of uh, the text amendment and had no further comment. So at this time, I will um, open the floor for the Planning Commission to discuss the text amendment. 
and staff is requesting direction to move forward uh, the, tech, the proposed text amendment to joint public hearing. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Hearing none, is there anybody from the public or online that wishes to speak? No, ma'am. Great, if there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to move that the board direct staff to move the proposed text amendment forward to a joint public hearing. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tuohy, seconded by Vice Chair Kernan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. The next item on the agenda is item 8B, MACO Conference, August 17th through 20th, 2022, at the Roland Powell Convention Center in Ocean City, Maryland. There is a winter, sum, uh, winter and summer MACO Conference held each year in Ocean City, Maryland. This year in 2022, the summer conference will be held on August 17th through the 20th, 2022, during the same time frame of the Planning Commission regular meeting presently scheduled for August 17th, 2022. To allow plan, uh, review and discussion, to allow Planning Commission members to attend the MACO Summer 2022 Conference, staff is seeking direction from the Planning Commission to allow a possible change to the Planning Commission regular meeting from Wednesday, August 17th to Wednesday, August 24th. As of this writing, there is a joint public hearing being proposed for Tuesday, August 23rd with the Board of County Commissioners and Planning Commission. Next steps, the Planning Commission may elect to take one of the following actions. Make no change and leave the Planning Commission regular meeting on August 17th, 2022 as originally scheduled or direct staff to schedule the Planning Commission regular meeting from August 17th to August 24th, 2022 accordingly. The next suggestion would be to suggest an alternative date other than August 24th and vote to reschedule on that date or combine the August 17th, 2022 meeting into the September 21st, 2022 Planning Commission regular meeting and hold no regular meeting in August, 2022. Thank you. Commissioners? Questions, comments, motion? I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair. I would request that we direct staff to reschedule Planning Commission regular meeting from August 17th to August 24th accordingly. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tui and a second by Vice Chair Kernan. All those in favor? Yeah, well, oh, well, yes, sir. Can we discuss that just for a second? Absolutely. Sure. Tamara, what is the, the 23rd joint public hearing that's scheduled? Do you know what that is? That joint public hearing would be for the Solomons, is it the Solomons Town Center um, that a, um, Rachel just presented? Mary Beth Cook, and Director of Planning and Zoning. We're also going to be bringing the historic district guidelines mm -hmm. um, to public hearing as well as the, the park and recreation. land preservation, mm -hmm. parks and, and recreation and plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have three items on the public hearing. Is there a reason that we have to meet on the Wednesday? <laughs> What are you proposing? Uh, I would suggest that we schedule the a regular meeting on the 23rd right after the joint public hearing. Well, but we have to be here for the public hearing anyway. We have a motion on the floor. Yeah, Let's that take that one first. We have, because it's been a motion um, by Commissioner Tui and a second by Vice Chair Kernan. So I'm gonna call the question. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Okay, next on the agenda, um, item nine, items of interest. Item 9A, Maryland Planning Commission Association 39th Annual Conference 
October 25th through 26th in Frederick um, City. just for informational purposes. All right, commissioners, any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mayor? Okay, next on the agenda is item 9B, site plan and subdivision applications. Um, it's for informational purposes also. Go ahead. Okay. Next on the agenda is um, item 10, public comment. Um, planning commissioners will accommodate public comment in person by telephone or virtually. Individuals should call in advance and participate by telephone. Um, do we have anyone on the line at this moment for any public comment? On Zoom, no ma'am. There are no speakers. All right, we move forward. Next, um, next on the agenda, item 11, adjournment. Do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Vice Chair Kernan, second by Commissioner Tui. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Have a good night.